dreamers and welcome to the sand and stars podcast for those who are just joining us the sand and stars podcast is a podcast that has been created to inspire a whole generation to dream by exposing you welcoming you into this world and hearing interesting stories from people who are doing different audacious seemingly impossible out of the box things and learning about their journey so today's episode we are going to be having or rather i am going to be having a conversation with andrew kagia andrew kagia is a 3d animator and games developer and he is self-taught and the founder of africana digital um, and under africana digital's hero smashers which is a youtube channel that has allowed him to share his passion for 3D animation and gaming to over 400 million people across the world. Uh, So I'm so excited to share his story with you and his passion for telling African stories and using 3D animation to do so. So let's get started. My question one is always, who is Andrew Kagia? Who are you? Who is Andrew Kagia? Um, it's a it's a broad question. Okay, so I guess Andrew Kagia is a a very uh, ambitious. I don't know how how, how do I say this. I, I I would summarize it in 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 saying that I'm someone who is I constantly see possibility I, I don't know if that makes sense oh. it's like I'm, I'm constantly hopeful that things you know can always be better than they are or, or or that I can always do more than what I'm doing or that uh, there's no reason to feel that there's something that I can't do for one reason or the other um, mm-hmm. so 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 I don't know if that really answers the question but that's 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 the kind of person that I am um uh, like ever, ever since I was I was young, I remember I always had these crazy ideas. Like even in school, uh, in in prime, especially from like primary. No, even in even honestly in pre unit. Wow. <laughs> I remember, uh, like there used to be like times. I think was it during lunch or before lunch or something where where the the teacher would like call students up and tell them to you know to tell stories to you know to the other kids. Yeah, and all kids were like five years old, four years old. Um, and and for whatever reason, I always I always knew the kind of stories that would get the kids like, you know, going like, wow, you know, I'd create all these crazy, fantastic stories in my head, uh-huh. uh, you know. So so like like like, like uh, most kids would be like, okay, so I don't know. A long time ago, there was a, a rabbit and a tortoise. You know, we had go crazy saying there was a dragon and a tiger. <laughs> I'd say things which would just get the kids like, wow. <laughs> for, for whatever reason, I knew how to kind of, I don't know, I always had these out, out there thoughts for, for, you know, for the place that I was. And all throughout school, um, you know, even during things like physics or chemistry lessons or whatever, I'd always ask the teacher things that are way out of context, you know. Wow. Like I'd be asking the teacher, how do you make a grenade, for example, what are the chemical components of a, of a nuclear bomb? And, and that time you're supposed to be balancing equations, you know. So, so <laughs> I, I was just was always thinking out there, and I was like, yeah, but why can't we create something for the science congress? You know, why can't we create bombs or whatever? And and of course, like uh, students always like you, Kagia, why you you always dreaming, you always doing this and always that. But that's just the way I've always been, you know. Mm. So I've, I've I've just always seen like why like why can't we do certain things? Why why not? So. so I um I guess I'm a dreamer I guess uh but but I like to see possibilities I don't see why things can't be done just cuz maybe somebody says they can't be you know um and and that's really even how I am now so um yeah wow. but, I love that yeah. in fact I think that's one of the best the best descriptions of who are you I've gotten so far um and I love it because it's just it's intrinsically who you are uh so even from when when you've been telling the story i'm like you are a natural storyteller and the roots of that storytelling is because you have a very wild imagination that's untamed Mm -hmm. right um you see the possibilities you're curious and i think that curiosity is a fantastic thing 
Um, and, I, and that's how like the dots connect backwards. I'm like, aha, this is how. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This is how you have become who you have become with such an interesting journey. Um so I think the next thing would be now that we know that you are you're a dreamer, you are the guy who everything is possible. You look at the possibilities wildly curious, imaginative. So I want to talk about and I'm sure um I want to talk about your journey into 3D animation into this world of gaming i mean you do you do quite a bit right you're a game developer you're a 3d animator mm-hmm. but of course you did you didn't study this and i think that's the most wonderful part of your story um i think it's an interesting thing because generally what i experience uh, with most adults is they never really do exactly what it is they studied unless you are like a doctor or very specific um yeah. most of the times it's okay i did this but then i was like i discovered ah this is what i want to do so yeah tell us about your journey into 3d animation game development mm. how did you get into this uh and that one is a is, is a <laughs> it's quite a long story because Well, Again, that one, sorry. <laughs> that, that, that also goes back to childhood because um okay when I was young I was I was an artist I loved to draw on paper mm. and and I had all these ideas in my head mm. which which I felt very frustrated because I, I I didn't know how to express them on paper like I could only draw I mean on paper you only draw still images yeah? so so but I had these things in my head which I now know were 3D images Like in my head I could see them I could see all the angles I could see different things but I could not express that on paper. Mm. Uh, so for the longest time that that frustrated me and then uh there were certain cartoons that I would watch on TV um I remember on KBC there was a uh, there was some Disney cartoon I don't remember which one it was but but the moment I remember seeing that one that was the first trigger for me that whatever this is which now, of course now is animation which whatever that was i knew that's what i wanted to do when i grew up wow like, i i didn't know of course to school animation i i knew it was a cartoon i didn't know mm-hmm. what the process is but i was like wow i saw that and i was like that like how do they i want that whatever that is i want that and that was in the early 90s and then so 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 there are basically maybe three about three different um, experiences i had in the 90s that led me to to concluding that this was what basically I was I'm here to do you know mm-hmm. and and one of them is watching some cartoon it was a disney cartoon I don't remember which it was but uh, the second one I was remember was watching um Jurassic Park the first Jurassic Park which is from I think 1995 or 1994 um that's the one for the dinosaurs mm-hmm. um, I mean now there's there's a new one now I mean they've done a few but, but the one I remember watching in the 90s uh on video tape yeah <laughs> I remember in fact my elder brother who was watching it and yeah. he, he he had told me you know you have to leave the room because it's not for kids because he's older than me so mm-hmm. so I'm hiding behind the you know the the the, the sofa watching the thing and I'm seeing these dinosaurs <laughs> and I'm seeing like real dinosaurs and, and the people are interacting they're running from them you know I'm mm. like so so I'm like oh, so so eventually I was, I was so like wowed by that I think I I like shouted or something and my my brother saw that I was there I was like wait how how do they do the, like these are you know so so I'm, so I'm trying to understand how are these like but dinosaurs don't exist how is this possible mm. He, he's telling me the dinosaurs are not real and I'm like what would you mean they're not real dinosaurs i mean these guys are running from them they are interacting with them what do you mean they're not real like trying to explain that to a child that you know it doesn't make any <laughs> sense so so yeah. my head was like no these are real dinosaurs mm. like they they found a way to to grow dinosaurs and shot a movie with them because it just doesn't make any other sense no, no other know. way this is possible it's like magic it's not possible how <laughs> what do you mean that, but a dinosaur is eating this man this man is real so how can you tell me the dinosaur is not real it's like so 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 I'm like so what is this thing how you mean you're able to create stuff that's not real that looks real that interacts like so in my head and I'm a kid I'm like wait what is this you know like this is insane <laughs> so so that's another seed that was planted i'm like but this is this just doesn't make sense but whatever this is um you know i started kind of 
looking now for for things towards that direction and of course you know there was no access to internet or anything so but but i would watch whenever i got an opportunity to see something that had to do with some kind of animation on tv if there was a documentary or something that had 3d like i was there i was glued to the screen mm. you know and then now moving forward to 1999 um, <clears throat> the, uh, there was this video game called Tekken on the PlayStation it's a fighting game mm-hmm. um, so i saw some some kid playing it somewhere and um, it was this place you know where you pay to play PlayStation at the time it was like 200 an hour and uh, no my, my no my folks were like there's no way we are paying 200 for you so i was just watching some other kids play but i saw that and that was it for me like that's what kind of wrapped it up for me I was like mm. okay now this whatever all this is that i've seen whatever this is i want to do this and that's the end of the story that's it you know so 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 now uh, you know going through primary school going through high school it was at the back of my mind some some mm. even if i didn't have access to it directly but yeah. i knew this is it so even in school i talk about it all like so 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 like in school i remember talking to my friends about I'm going into the technicalities of animation. Then they're just like, did you watch X-Men? I'm like, yeah, do you know how they do X-Men? <laughs> so I'm going all technical. They don't want to hear that. <laughs> like, yeah, that's ringing it. Like, like, we just, did you watch X-Men or not? <laughs> you know? So yeah. anyway, so, 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 but it was planted in my mind and, and eventually I had access to, uh, to some software when I was about 13 years old now. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I had, uh, my eldest sister had gone to study abroad. And when she came back, I, I asked her to come back with video games, but instead of coming back with video games, she came back with a bunch of animation software. So that's... Oh, wow. Yeah, she thought it was video games. Imagine that. So, oh, my... Oh, this is how yeah. you know. You look at things, you're like, wow, wow, yes, wow. exactly. What exactly. what are the chances, you know? What are, Whereas, the what are the odds? So instead of getting you the games, yes. she brought the software to create. Yes. And in wow. fact, on the... And it was bootleg software. So So on the on the package of the cd it was like 3ds max the software has been used to make movies and games like the though like literally that's what was printed i'm like what so okay so so this is what is used so i mean i installed it started playing with it that day there were no tutorials like i just started learning that and i was about i think i was 13 years old yeah so 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 that's where now it started and and then i went to high school um, you know, I was in boardings. I didn't have access to that stuff, but it was always at the back of my mind. So that by mm. the time I'm clearing high school, um, I more or less knew that either way, I'm going to somehow find a way to pursue this path. Wow. And, um, and 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 when I cleared, I I thought because my elder sister had gone abroad, I um, I thought I'd also have the opportunity, but uh, the, the finances were not there for me to you know to flat to 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 be taken abroad to study. Mm. So I was like, okay, it's fine. I'll then find a way to teach myself, and so I started teaching myself, and uh, yeah, eventually that's 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 uh, that's I guess how how this whole thing started. Um, so that, that's what, that's yeah. So that's the story of the self-taught uh, Andrew Kagia. It started when I was a kid. I had this passion. I saw I saw so many things that planted seeds, and, and I was like, this is it, you know. Ah, oh, that's amazing. So now from 13, you get software. There's no tutorials, nothing. No uh, tutorials, because there's no YouTube or anything. It was no, but hey, there was, guys don't appreciate how easy it is to get yeah. information nowadays. Like at a yeah. click, you can get information that you would yeah. have to hound mm-hmm. to get even a quarter of that them yeah. days. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, all right. So, you're teaching, so now like you, you, you're not able to go abroad, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and there's there's no programs per se. I mean, yeah. the Africa, Kenya, them days, it's like what a, be a doctor or an, or an architect or exactly. a lawyer. And my parents were very disappointed, of course, you know, because yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I mean they they wanted like, like because there were no institutions here to teach that. Mm. it's like okay so and, and they didn't really of course understand what animation was you know yeah so it's like what do you, you want to be an artist like and, and then the idea of artists because artists of that generation were serving artists yeah they were failures in life so so they're like mm. you want to be like one of those ones you know and in my head i'm like no but me have a, i have i know where I, in my head i have a, a vision of where i want to go you know so 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 they were quite disappointed in the beginning because they, they really couldn't understand Mm. Why I was I was choosing to do that instead of 
you know, studying something locally, even if it wasn't animation, they at least wanted me to have a degree for a fallback, you know? Yeah. But I was like, no, I, I if it's not, if it's not animation, I mean, the, I was to do economics. I was like, nah, that's not really what I'm feeling, you know? So mm. I was like, no, since I'm not going abroad, I'll teach myself, you know? Because what is, am I just going to sit and be bitter saying why why you know why why can't I go abroad? It's like mm-hmm. let me, let me, it's like my sister is the one who went for me. That's what I say nowadays. You know, oh, wow. didn't know it, but she went for me <laughs> because <laughs> if she didn't come back with that stuff, like, that's where it all started. You see? That was the catalyst, anyway. Yeah. So, wow. so 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 yeah. I mean, of course, people didn't understand it in the beginning. It was a bit challenging. Mm. You know, all my relatives were being called to talk to me. Kijana oh. like there, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it was, it was, it was hard in the beginning, quite hard. But I would, and and in fact, I had to do some other, you know, different jobs to, to kind of just well, while I was trying to make this thing work, I was doing, you know, I was I was working as a web designer and I was doing all these different things while I was trying to figure this whole thing out. So it was quite a process. Wow. So, yeah. oh my gosh, I'm like Aki the bravery. Uh, so in, you know what it is you want to do. You're like, okay, if I'm not able to go abroad, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just lying down and saying, okay, let me do something. Let me just do a normal degree. You are like, Z, you know what? I'm going to teach myself. So, which means you didn't go to campus. You are like, you, you are self-campusing, right? Um, yeah. And teaching yourself. And basically almost it's like you're getting into the gig economy where you're doing websites and whatnot uh, on the side so, I think, gosh, this is so interesting. So now, of course, at this point, your parents are like, this guy is not okay. Like, it's this is not this is not what we had planned for his life. Mm-hmm. So your uncles are coming to talk to you. People are being called, Uliombewa, what are you prayed for? <laughs> uh, I'm sure, yeah. I was, I was, everything. Uh, I, everything. I mean, they, they, all my relatives, my grandmother, my uncles, I mean, everyone, my sisters. And everyone, everyone uh, like was like, Ay. you know, because they couldn't really see it, and, yeah. and so people just thought I was wasting my time, you know. Um, in fact, so so at one point I told my dad, just give me six months, let me try and figure this out, you know. So mm-hmm. he, he he was gracious, give me six months. Six months later, he calls me up. He's like, okay, so the six months are up. What do you have to show for for this time? I'm like. Uh, things aren't really working the way we want, but I'm 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 making a little bit of headway. Give me another six months, yeah. So it's like, hey, since uh, you want to listen to your parents, your parents know more than you. Uh, now here, you have to sort yourself out, you know. So <laughs> so now I start being charged rent. I start being no. I, I have to take care of my own fare and this and that. I have nothing. And I'm trying. I'm trying, but like they didn't understand that I was honestly trying. To them, I was wasting time. But me and you was trying. I'm trying to figure this thing out, you know. So, so at that point, it became quite, quite hard, you know. So I went, found a job, you know, to, to at least pay those costs and stuff. Yeah, because now you've been told, eh, eh, sort yourself out. It's like it's a, it's a level of you've been cut off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so that became quite hard. But, uh, and and it, it was honestly quite hard. There are times I had to walk such long distances. Like there's once I walked. <laughs> Wow, there's once I walked, I don't know, it's like 40 kilometers because I, okay, I was, ex- so I was expecting a check. Yeah? Um, mm-hmm. I went to, I went to town with only enough money to get there and not to come back. Yeah? Yo. And then you get there and then you find, oh, missing. Yeah? You, you, you know, when you get all sorts of stories, people are like, oh, someone is not picking their phone or this or that, you know, just. I know. Yeah. Anyway, so 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 I had to walk such long distances sometimes. It's like, I mean, anyway, it's it's been a long journey. Let's say that. So, but but, and and of course, it it would have been very easy to give up. But mm. for me, I was like, no, this, it's not. I wasn't trying to get into this thing for the money. I entered it because of the the passion I had for it. Mm. If it was just for the money, then of course I would have given up a long time ago when things were very hard. You see, but because it was a passion thing. Um, I think even that's more than a passion. I honestly feel like this is what I, I was supposed to you do. Called, this you is know? what you were created to do. So, yeah. So because of that, that's that's what helped me to get through those uh, those crazy times. That's this is 
it's so inspiring um, for me because I'm like, you literally had to, you, you fought for your dream and you didn't give up on it. Mm. Um, in, in an industry, in a part of the world where your dream doesn't make sense, um, mm. where we are the consumers and not the creators. So that you can't fathom the fact that, what are you talking about? Like, what are you going to create? That makes sense. Mm. Um, where is the market for this? How can it ever become a way for you to earn a living? So this is, oh, this is so interesting. So, all right. So now you're hustling, you know, you're doing websites to um, earn some revenue as you're still learning, you're still growing. So tell me about like, what was your almost like, you know, like your first break or your first defining moment where you're like, oh my God, you want to tell me that I can create something and people will appreciate it and I can actually make a living from it. Or even just create where people actually appreciate that you've created something, where they can see the work of your hands and it's like, ah, oh, yeah, that was Andrew Kagea's work. What was one of like your most defining moments? You know, like this is the one that broke, you know, like, Ilea, what is it called? Um, it, it cracked the glass so that you could break through, right? What was that thing? Um, okay, in terms of the, 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 the first one that started to get me, I think, the, the attention um, mm-hmm. was a project I did in 2011 called Wageuzi. So it was um, a political animation. I think elections was 2012, something like that. So, mm-hmm. so, so it, was a, it was an animation based on uh, where I had presented like the, the political the presidential ca- candidates as like transformers. So they were racing and they're turning into like bots, they're fighting each other, that kind of thing. So mm-hmm. that, 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 that was 2011. That one, it, it gained quite a bit of attention. Um, I mean, it got the attention even of like CNN, a few of these guys. And oh, wow. in fact, I remember a few of the politicians even tweeted me out, they started following me on Twitter. A few oh. of them called me to like they wanted to see if I could work with, with them on their campaigns. So, so there was a bit of that. I think that's the one that kind of because even now, as, as much as that's I think eleven years ago, mm-hmm. even now people constantly bring that up, and that's mm. ten years on ten years. People always like, yeah, Wagyuzi. I remember I first heard about you from that one. Of course, mm. I've done a lot more since, but that one sticks in people's minds the most. Um, Although for me, again, that's a bittersweet one because as it, it brought, at least, I don't know, that's where you can say the, uh, where people began to hear about me really, but mm-hmm. um, I think the, 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 the results of that were also a bit negative because it ended up, I ended up getting robbed, my house was broken into after releasing that thing. It brought no. a lot of, yeah, about three weeks after the release of that thing. What? Um, yeah, it was on this. So I released it, I think, somewhere December 3rd, maybe 2011 or something. Mm-hmm. And then on December 31st, my house was broken into. So mm-hmm. and they so they took my hard drives, my computers. Oh. Uh, you know, the, the, the stuff that was of the value. So so you imagine yeah. starting starting January 2012 with nothing, you know. <laughs> so, so, so that was a... A bittersweet one experience for me that one because mm. not good and bad. Uh, then of course now starting twenty twelve again with nothing that was a, a whole other challenge on its own, you know. Mm. But then so so, so there was what gives and then the second one I think now the biggest one probably was in twenty sixteen when I launched uh, my YouTube channel called Hero Smashers. Um, mm-hmm. So. I always had this idea of doing superhero fights because I'm I really love the superhero you know, genre. So I'm like, you know, how about you have all these different heroes fighting each other, Marvel, DC, that kind of thing. So I, I released a video and I think it's the second video on the channel that I released, you know. And the thing just blew up from nowhere, it just blew up. Like in a week it went viral. In a week mm-hmm. of it wow. went from zero to you know quarter million views in seven days, and then from there it just blew up. So Yo. Like, like that particular video has, I don't know, I'm sure it has like 400 million views right now, something like that, you know. I'm like, and that's, you, you know, what was so funny is, so when uh, my friend Kevin was introducing you, mm-hmm. and then I went to a YouTube channel, I was like, what? 
<laughs> I, what, the, what? And it's not, you know, it's it's not like it's not a music video. It's not like an yeah. online yeah. series. It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this is crazy. Um, yeah. even for an ordinary like YouTuber, these are intense, like crazy numbers. Yeah. 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 No, it was crazy. I just uh, just blew up, but. I mean, I was also shocked. Like, I was like, "What, what is, what is going on here?" You know. <laughs> so, but, but, but now that's in terms of like now people now who who have seen the work, I think that's the biggest one yet mm. because hundreds of millions of people now have like actually seen that stuff. Mm. Um, yeah. So, 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 so those are the two that I'd, I'd say in terms of getting my name more out there. Those are the two biggest ones. Um, yeah, although of course I've done other stuff, but th- th- those would be the two that come to mind as 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 uh, as to which ones have actually got many marks there. Those. Yeah, the ones that that's like they stand out. You know, it's almost like pivotal moments. Yeah. In your in your animated life. So now that you are, you know, you have Hero Smashers, um, your company. What is the name of What is the name of the company? It slipped my mind. Uh, the company is Africana Digital. Africana Digital, right? Yeah. Um, so tell me about about that because um, you've talked about Hero Smashers. Tell me about Africana Digital. Uh, so Africana Digital is kind of the, I guess the, the 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 mother company. So 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 Hero Smashers is like a subsidiary of Africana. So mm. Africana is the I guess the overall production house that that has all these um, you know different departments. So, so there's Hero Smashers, which deals with the you know the superhero mm-hmm. type of content, and then there's uh, uh, the department which deals with games, and then there's now Africana generally speaking, which deals with more of commercial elements, you know. So whether it's TV commercials or short films for for clients specifically for clients, the commercial side of of, of it, um, and, and as well as creating our you know our own internal um film content because ultimately film is where i want the focus of africana to be um, mm. because we have so many stories as africans like we have too many stories but so many um, yeah the opportunity to get them out there is, is is i mean people really haven't done that uh i mean of course we have everyone knows about black panther yeah which mm. of course technically is not really an african it's i mean it's 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 fictional it's it's not really from Africa because it's purely fictional. There's mm. nothing wrong with that. But uh, anyway, the, the you know the, the success of Black Panther showed us that truly it's, it's not. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's possible. It's not just okay. People want this kind of content, you know. Yeah, and so, African stories are interesting. Like we, we have yeah. our heroes, we have our villains, yeah. um, and the vibrancy of the culture itself. Yes. Um, yeah, I always say I enjoy watching Asian films. Because um, mm-hmm. they're really good storytellers, but other than that, is they're really able to capture their stories and translate it to the world, um, yeah. and do it with such high quality. So yes. I think we 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 have just it's just different cultures, but we have amazing stories. It's just that the way that we are packaging it, the quality with which we are releasing it and translating mm-hmm. it to the world, is where the bottleneck happens. Yeah, true, true. Mm-hmm. And so, 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 so that's something that uh, I'm personally trying to, you know, to, to to get into and to change that that idea of the, the quality has to be low because I'm sure like there are some videos I mean there are even viral videos on YouTube like the where people make fun of these African movies like uh, I don't know if you've seen like the African Spider Man there, there's some really funny stuff out there that people make fun of and and, and of course that's so, so, so there's that kind of stereotype that African movies have this kind of quality, and that, that's, mm-hmm. that's, you know, so, so like I, I'm trying to do something that would be the equivalent of of something you'd watch on on big screen for like Marvel or DC or something, but mm-hmm. but now that's African, you know, uniquely yeah. African, and, and so so um, I really love the idea of going into like the deep mythologies and and, and that kind of thing because mm-hmm. people want to see that, and, yeah. and there's something. Uh, that 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 I've been working on, which is actually the, it's just a matter of now releasing, the, you know, going into the how, how to release it best. Um, but, but it's a, it's essentially an African superhero story which combines the myth and the science, and uh, it's 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 it's, a, it's an interesting idea that I had for a couple of years, and I got the chance to to do it. 
So that's 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 a big project I've been I've been working on. It's uh, it's due for release very soon. Oh, exciting! In fact, because that that was the next question. It was what are you working on right now that is really exciting to you? Yes, it's uh, it's it's that it's uh, uh, it's a feature film. It's fully 3D animated. Um, oh. Uh, yeah, African superheroes. So, so I'm, I'm trying to build a universe where where there are all these different characters that exist um, mm. from, from different African, you know, cultures, not not just the Kenyan. And so, so I'm trying to build a, a whole catalog of characters, which they, they all exist in the same universe. Um, of course, from different time frames, past, some the present, some the future. So, oh, so, wow. so. But, but it's all one kind of reality and i'm mm. trying to see how all these how so 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 the universe connects these characters through one form or the other so like in this particular film there's an artifact uh that, that brings uh, an ancient wizard back to life and oh, wow. this same artifact has been harnessed by a certain uh, uh a certain organization to create a very like futuristic type of weapons so on one side it's seen as magic, on the other side it's seen as advanced science, and the oh, two wow. have a clash in the film. There's this clash between the two. Um, so so it, anyway, it's, so, so it's a crazy idea I've been thinking of. So 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 that's the project I've been working on, working on the past over the past year year plus. Um, oh, so exciting! Yeah. So do you have a tentative release date? I'm like these are things we look out for. Or right now it's just waiting to see when the right time would be to release it. I'm waiting to see the right time because uh, you know, elections are coming up and all. Mm. It might not be the best time to release before then. Just wait yeah. and see how you know how things settle down. So hopefully from maybe September somewhere. There. Um, the ideal release would be maybe September, October. Ah, oh, fantastic. Mm. All right, so my key question, I'm really curious. So now now that what you're doing is is a le- it's a legit career. You know, like because now there's actual tangible representation for what you had envisioned and had been dreaming about for all those years and are working towards it. Uh, so, do your paros now understand what you do? What what is the narrative there? Has it changed? Um, what what is that like? Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, of course, the story is quite different now because they've seen. You know they've seen the fruits of it. They've seen mm. what it can become. That that it's something that you can actually make money off of mm. and live a you know, live a good life off of it. So, mm. like, of course they they still tell me as much as we don't fully understand what it is we do. We know that you've been able to make something viable out of it. You yeah. Know? So, mm. so 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 they understand it from that uh, perspective. Um, of course they still can't really get it, but they yeah. get that. <laughs> That, that that you know that yes you can make money you can live your life like it's it's yeah. as viable as anything as as being a doctor it's as it's just it's equally viable mm. so, so so they understand it uh, you know in that in that way wow that's fantastic uh honestly i don't i could be here asking even more questions but i'm like oh we have a time limit uh <laughs> so okay. andrew um yeah. i would ask you if there were, if there was a key lesson or several key lessons that you'd want, that you've learned through your whole journey and you'd like to share, what would they be? Um, I'd say for one, um, I guess commit commitment is key, like commit to something. Um, mm. f- find that thing that, you know, find something that's worth committing to so that even when things are hard mm. uh, it's still it's still valid and it's still worth it even 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 during hard time because um i mean like now I, there are many people who uh i started who joined animation later down the line even when things were hard they they they, they quit they moved to other things and they've never really come back to it like when things were hard, that's when they, they were like, you know, it's not worth it. I'll find something easier to do, you know. Um, and, 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 and I can count quite a number of people who we, we started with animation and they left when things were very hard. Um, it, it's, 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 it's easy to quit when 
when the commitment isn't that's it's much harder when 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 this thing means that much to you you know uh because i mean like for me regardless of what people were saying and, and, and i mean people would talk down even i mean some people even very close to me like the, the, at the when at the time when i was still trying to figure this thing out uh people were uh, there are some people who really looked down on me but for me i just knew this is it this is what i want to do so it's not about what you're going to say or this and that so so for me i think commitment the the fact that i committed to this and was not going to deviate regardless of what people were saying uh i think that's ultimately why it worked out because i didn't i didn't have a plan b i didn't i wasn't like if this doesn't work i'll go and do this one i i committed and and i stuck to it so i'd say commitment is one of the biggest things you don't give up um i mean there there, there are seasons but seasons don't last forever even the worst season like you know it, it can't rain forever it's never dark forever like there's always a, a turning somewhere and for me the, the biggest turning is always when i was was almost like this is a bit too much like at, at those those hardest points are almost always where the change you know the change comes it's it's almost it's almost like a test you're getting in life things are always just the hardest before they change it's just mm-hmm. waiting for you to to stick around for just one one more second but you the thing is you never know when that one second is so you just have to keep going until it works mm-hmm. so, I'd say for me the biggest thing is commitment. Just commit to something and and stick to it. If, if it means that much to you, then stick to it. And uh, you know, it's just a matter of time until until uh, you, know, you get your your break. Fantastic. I have nothing else to add other than to say thank you so much, Andrew, for telling your story, for sharing. Um, it's such a fantastic story, and I hope it touches people's lives. It changes their perspective and inspires them to commit to that thing even if it sounds strange looks impossible has not never been done before uh so thank you so much for your time yep and that's the end thank you thank you for for having me on the podcast Thank you for listening to the end of the Sand and Stars podcast. Really excited to have been with you in this episode and I hope that you got inspired, you learned something that you probably had no idea about. Uh so if you know anyone who is doing something that is out of the norm, interesting, impactful, very very different, something that no one would ever think about, go ahead and share the details with me. You can email me at bethekingori@gmail.com. also in the description and we can get them on the podcast super excited to share the next episode with you so stick on <laughs>